name is Mary Camila Gertrudez, and I believe that there's a book that every Filipino has to have a chance to read, Nalimitangera by Dr. Serza. It is a book that speaks of peaceful revolution, making use of reforms and education. And it doesn't make use of education as this violent weapon of war, but rather as a set of tools, opportunities, for everyone to be able to stand on equal footing to those in power. With all this in mind, the most pressing issue that I see in the Philippines is a lack of access to quality education, especially towards our indigenous people of the South, the Lumans. The Lumans consist of several groups mostly located in Mindanao and the Cordillera Administrative Region. They make up over 14 to 17 million people of our country. However, only in 1997 was the IPRA or the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act put into place. Section 2E of this law states that Indigenous people will benefit on an equal footing to the rights and opportunities which national laws and regulations grant to other members of the population. However, this statement seems to have lost meaning with the fact that over 55 Lumen schools have been shut down by Davao's Department of Education, or DEPED. The reason for doing this was that these schools were being used as training grounds for New People's Army rebels to teach of sedition. And I agree that action must be taken, especially when it involves the teaching of dangerous ideals in the presence of children. However, shutting down these schools permanently and saying that these students can just go to the nearby 33 DEPED schools where over 1,000 children are already enrolled, does not seem like the best course of action, especially when there is money to be used for the funding of new infrastructure and training of new teachers. Well, the problem is that the government is not properly allocating towards the problems that need to be addressed. One example is the fact that the government recently just spent 2 billion pesos, or roughly $38 million, on a new private jet, while 21.6 of our population still live under the poverty line. So what now? Thankfully, there are solutions. One is for the voting population to participate in the coming elections, especially the 2022 presidential elections, to research heavily on their candidates, what their qualifications, aspirations, and advocacies are, and for them to put those who are willing to serve into office. To reject those who want to use flashy advertisements and easy to break promises to attract people, and to really look to those who are competent with our country's resources, who know what to do with the money that our people trust to the government. And to my fellow youth, aside from knowing and speaking about these issues, we have to study. Study to be able to work for the betterment of our country. Because this is our revolution now, our education, our tools to be able to create a better future for everyone. Because I have no doubt that our generation will house some of the greatest in innovators, game changers, and leaders of tomorrow. And it was Jose Rizal who once said, Ang kabataan ang pag-asa para sa bayan. And, well, I believe that we are the hope for the future. Thank you for listening.